These paintings show Paris in the 1870s. They were done by Claude Monet, who became known for this hazy, impressionist style. But his paintings didn't always look like this. Some of his earlier works didn't have this low contrast blurring. Studies like this one from 2023 have actually shown that Monet's paintings were influenced by the increase in air pollution caused by the Industrial Revolution. He wasn't the only painter whose work showed this trend. J. M. W. Turner's paintings of London showed a similar thing. Both cities had become heavily polluted places, with sulfur dioxide from burning coal turning into hazy aerosols in the air. The burning of coal had darkened the skies of Paris, but under those skies an interesting story emerged. Some rays of sunlight cut through the smog and sparked a revolution in energy. This video is about a 19-year-old in Paris who accidentally discovered a way to generate energy using the power of the sun. Before we dive in, I want to tell you that on September 21st, 2025, there is a day of action called Sunday to celebrate the power of solar and wind energy. Around the world, people will gather to learn about clean energy, install solar panels, ride e-bikes, or be involved in many different ways. You can check out this map to find and RSVP to an event near you. Sunday is all about harnessing the sun to leave fossil fuels behind. It's incredible that that's even a possibility, so let's take a look at how we learned to turn sunlight into electricity in the first place. Born in Paris in 1820, Edmund Becquerel grew up watching Paris transform into a place of industrialization. And so it is kind of poetic that against this backdrop, at the age of only 19, Becquerel tinkered around and unlocked the key to a solar punk future, the photovoltaic solar cell. Known as PV solar cells, they are an essential component of solar panels that make it possible to collect and repurpose energy from solar rays. Today, solar panels using PV solar cells can be found on every continent in the world and even in space to power spacecraft and the International Space Station. In stark contrast to the Paris that Becquerel would have known, solar panels are an essential green technology, making it possible to reduce air pollution today. But while Becquerel may have been the first to observe an interaction between solar rays and electricity, he likely barely knew what he was seeing. It would take at least four decades until something even resembling a solar panel was created, and even longer for the real mechanics behind this interaction to be understood. But without the initial spark of this young, light-obsessed physicist, solar energy as we know it might not have been possible. There's a chance that if you know the name Becquerel, that you might actually be thinking of Edmund's arguably more famous son, Henri Becquerel, who shared a Nobel Prize with Marie and Pierre Curie in 1903 for the discovery of radioactivity. In fact, Edmund and Henri are just a couple of famous Becquerel physicists, dating back to Edmund's father, Antoine César, who first discovered piezoelectricity, a phenomenon where certain materials like crystals can accumulate charge, and that was in 1819. This was just one year before the birth of his son, Edmund Becquerel. Becquerel was born on March 24, 1820, in Paris as the second son in his family. Instead of attending university, at the age of 18, Becquerel became an assistant in his father's physics lab at the French Museum of Natural History. It was one year later, in 1839, while conducting his own experiments in his father's lab, that Becquerel would stumble upon what he would call, in a paper that same year, the electrical effects produced under the influence of solar rays. In this report, first presented to the Academy of Sciences on July 29, 1839, the 19-year-old Becquerel described the strange phenomenon he observed while experimenting in the recesses of that museum. This report was translated from the original French to English on the anniversary of Becquerel's 200th birthday in 2020. In the report, Becquerel describes how he was tinkering in a dim lab. He had heated two platinum blades until they glowed red, and then immersed them in water. 
Normally, pure water doesn't conduct electricity well, but if you dissolve something in it, like an acid, a base, or a salt, it releases charged ions into the water. Those ions can move, and that movement allows electricity to flow through the liquid. Becquerel's blades dipped in water acted as electrodes, which were connected to wires and hooked up to a meter that could measure current. The water solution, whether acidic or alkaline, provided a pathway for charges to move in the circuit. With this initial setup, something unexpected happened. The needle on Becquerel's meter kicks when sunlight hits the apparatus. Was it an error, or had he just seen a new phenomenon? Astonished, Becquerel constructed a kind of black box around his apparatus with two compartments that he used to expose the blades to sunlight individually. The effect was immediately clear. The current flowed through the circuit when sunlight reached the blades. Becquerel wasn't trying to invent a solar cell or renewable energy. He was exploring how chemical reactions are affected by electricity, which is what his father had worked on, and he was curious about how light interacted with matter. At the time, scientists were fascinated by the idea of chemical rays, which are what they called parts of sunlight, especially the violet and blue colors, that seemed to trigger chemical reactions, such as in photography. Becquerel published his findings, even though he admits he's not sure what he's witnessing. Becquerel also used various pieces of colored glass to determine whether different colored light rays could produce a different electric effect. He found this to be true in some cases. Becquerel reports that one heated blade had a sensitive electric current only when the blade was exposed to violet or blue rays. But he also found that different chemical solutions, like nitric acid, could change this relationship so that the rays of the spectrum have no effect in determining the production of electrical currents. In addition to seeing how different parts of the rainbow affected electric current, Becquerel also explored how different blade materials, like brass and silver, and different chemical coatings, like bromine, iodine, and chloride, would impact the current as well. It may just be the translation, but Becquerel does refer to some of these iterations as being perfectly pickled, which is a delightful image. Becquerel did observe that different coatings could change how current was conducted, sometimes stronger, sometimes with different charge orientations, and that thickness of the chemical coating had an impact as well. Becquerel also included some tips for other scientists looking to carry out similar experiments, including the best way to apply chloride on silver blades by applying the solution to a wet blade and then gently heating the blade in the dark. In his conclusion, Becquerel comes to two key points. One, what he called refractive rays of sunlight, which are blue and UV light, which have shorter wavelengths and then can bend more when passing through a material, he found that they produce electric effects when incident on metal blades dipped in liquid. Two, the composition of silver chloride, bromide and iodide under the influence of light can also create electric effects, which can be used to determine the number of active chemical rays. It's this first finding, sometimes referred to as the Becquerel effect, that we now know is the basis for the photovoltaic effect, which is the fundamental physics behind solar cells. Though what's crazy is that when Becquerel wrote this down, neither he nor his peers could explain why it was happening. To them, it was a mysterious effect with no clear explanation. Since in 1839, the electron hadn't even been discovered yet. That wouldn't come until J.J. Thompson in 1897. There was still a long way to go from these results to a solar-powered world. Despite being the first person to report this effect, Becquerel is not the person who transformed this finding into modern-day solar technology. The next advancement in solar technology was made in 1883 by American inventor Charles Fritz, who used Becquerel's understanding of the photovoltaic effect to design the first PV solar cell. Fritz's module was made from a thin layer of selenium covered in semi-transparent gold leaf. Fritz boasted that his solar cell could generate energy that is continuous, constant, and of considerable force, 
not only by exposure to sunlight, but also to dim, diffused daylight, and even to lamplight. For comparison, Fritz's solar cell would capture about 1-2% of the solar energy, compared to modern-day solar cells, which can capture closer to 20%. Various advancements riffing off and improving Fritz's solar cell would be invented and patented in the years to come, despite the fact that people still didn't understand what was actually going on. It was decades after Becquerel's mysterious discovery that Albert Einstein finally solved some of the puzzle. In 1905, the work that Einstein won his Nobel Prize for showed that light comes in packets, or photons, that can knock electrons loose. Each has energy proportional to its frequency. This was his explanation of a phenomenon called the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect and the photovoltaic effect are similar, and sometimes used interchangeably, but are characterized by the photovoltaic effect holding on to excited electrons, and the photoelectric effect ejecting excited electrons. Becquerel had seen that light could induce a current in a material, and Einstein on the other hand explained how light can knock electrons completely out of a material's atoms. Becquerel had noticed changes with colour, and with some help from Einstein, we since came to understand that colour isn't just colour, it's energy. Blue light carries more energy per photon than red light. In Becquerel's experiments, the blue photons had enough energy to kick off an electric current, whereas the lower energy red photons often could not. Einstein spoke about this too, explaining that only high-frequency light, which Becquerel called highly refractive, has enough energy to free electrons. He explained that the energy per photon matters more than the brightness of the light. It wouldn't be until 1954 that scientists at Bell Laboratories in New York City invented the modern silicon-based solar cells that would replace the less efficient selenium-based ones. These cells were considered the first practical device for converting solar energy to electricity, and it only took 115 years from Becquerel's original discovery. Modern solar cells are like a sandwich of two thin layers of semiconductor material, usually silicon, that create an electric field inside. When sunlight hits this material, it knocks loose some electrons in the silicon, and normally those electrons are bound in the material, but the cell's built-in electric field acts like a one-way street. It pushes the freed electrons in a single direction. Those moving electrons are an electric current. All of this happens on a tiny silicon chip, but when you link millions of these cells together, you get the solar panels that can power a house or a spaceship. While Becquerel cannot quite be called the father of solar energy, he certainly played a big role in its invention, and it's not the only accidental discovery he made. In 1848, he produced the first ever colour photographs. These are colours made by sunlight shining on silver chloride plates. Again, his aim wasn't to invent colour photography as we think of it, it was part of that same curiosity that led to his photovoltaic experiments. He wanted to see if sunlight could do more than just illuminate or heat things. He wondered if it could trigger chemical reactions or electrical changes. His process for these photographs was described as empirical, never explained, and quickly abandoned. It remained a mystery for 170 years as to why Becquerel's color photographs worked, in 2020, modern electron microscopy found that the colours came from silver nanoparticles. Different sizes of nanoparticles resonated with different colours of light, which is now called plasmonics. Later in his life, Becquerel would also publish a two-volume treatise in 1867 and 1868 on his investigations into the science of light called The Light, Its Causes, and Its Effects. While well, maybe not the world's most famous Becquerel, the importance of Edmund's passion for shining light on scientific mysteries cannot be overstated, and solar technology may not be where it is today if it weren't for this 19-year-old physicist tinkering in his father's lab. The streets of Paris may no longer be filled with sulfur smog from burning coal, but some parts of the world still are. 
You can help write the next chapter in this story by joining the Sunday of Action on September 21st. There are events to help you learn more about modern day solar technology and to promote its use. The Sunday events hope to tackle our biggest challenges, hosted under the same sky that inspired young Becquerel. The biggest barrier to clean energy now isn't technology, it's politics. The day will be about what's possible with the technology we already have, and asking for the laws and investments we need to make it accessible to everyone. There's a link in the description to this map so you can see what's happening near you, or even host your own event. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible, and a special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, Elodie.